Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to another week here at Mount Vernon. Thank you for joining us, whether you're in the building or joining us virtually. This week is our 13th Sabbath program, so we will have a summary from most, if not all, of our classes. But before we begin, let me go over to Elder Blair and ask him to make sure we start the right way with prayer. Shall we bow our heads? Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, first and foremost, for granting us the gift of life once more. And on a blessed Sabbath day to boot, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. And as we're about to review the lesson, dear Lord, we ask you to let thy spirit lead us and let the words that come out not be our words, but your words to send to your children, dear Lord. And let it find fertile soil that it may grow and nourish each one of us and give honor and praise to you. In the blessed name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. So, here in Sabbath school, we do have several different Sabbath school active at any given time. And it, they are arranged according to age group. So this week, as 13th Sabbath, at this point, I'm going to ask that Sister Annabelle Harrison, she will start with giving us a summary of the kindergarten lesson for this quarter. Good morning and Good morning happy, morning happy Sabbath. Sabbath. My name is Annabella Harrison. Here's what we learn in our kindergarten Sabbath school class during the first seven weeks. The memory verse for lesson one is God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Genesis 1, 31. It teaches that God made a wonderful world because he loves me. The memory verse for lesson two is God said, let us make mankind in our image. Genesis 1, verse 26. It teaches that God made people to be his friends. The memory verse for lesson three is God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Genesis 2, verse 3. It teaches that God made the Sabbath because he loves us. The memory verse for lesson four is that the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Psalm 100, verse 5. It teaches that he, God loves us all the time, even when we do wrong. The memory verse for lesson five is we will obey the voice of the Lord. Jeremiah 42, verse six. It teaches that we worship God when we obey him. The memory verse for lesson six is for what you have done, I will always praise you. Psalm 52, verse nine. It teaches that we thank God for taking care of us. The memory verse for Lesson 7 is Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. 48, verse 1, Psalms. Teaches that we thank God for keeping his promises. Perfect. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Harrison. Love your smile and your attention to detail. At this time, our second presenter, will be James Jack. Yes, the same James Jack who left us a little time ago. Hi, my name is James. And I will do lesson 8 through 13. Lesson 8. Let me verse it. Yeah, thank you. I am. Le uh, uh, lesson 8. Memory verse is I have sent a rainbow in, in the clouds and it will be a sign. Genesis chapter 9 verse 13. We thank God, God for his promises. Uh, 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 lesson 9. Memory verse is Follow the way I love. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. It teaches that a Christian family follow God. Lesson 10. The reverse is worship the Lord with gladness. Psalms chapter 100, verse 2. 
It teaches that the Christian family worship God together. Lesson 11. Many verse is let us not have Carlin between you and me. Genesis chapter 13 verse 18. It teaches that God's people put others first. Lesson 12. Memory verse is, I will expect nothing belong to you. Genesis chapter 14 verse 23. It teaches that we serve others out of love. Lesson 13. The reverse is let us love one another for love comes from God. First John chapter 14 verse 11, uh, 7. It teaches that people in a Christian family love each other. Goodbye. Thank you so very much, James. And it's great to see that even though you are in Alabama, you still remember us here at Mount Vernon. So thank you, Annabelle and James, for wrapping up kindergarten for us. At this time, we're going to move on to the primary, and that will be presented by Aiden Saunders. Hi, my name is Aiden Saunders, and I will be sharing with you a summary about the 10 plagues. The children of Israel had been slaves for four centuries. It was finally time for them to leave Egypt and go to the Promised Land. And God has chosen Moses to be their leader. Moses and his brother Aaron went to Pharaoh asking him to let the people go. Pharaoh refused, wanting to keep the Israelites as slaves in Egypt. Moses warned Pharaoh that Joe would come to Egypt unless the children of Israel were free. Egypt suffered through the 10 plagues. One, water turned to blood. Two, frogs. Three, gnats. Four, flies. Five, livestock died. Six, bulls and legion of the skin. Seven, hail. Eight, locusts ate all the plants. Nine, Egypt was in darkness except Goshen. And 10, death to the firstborn son. During each plague, Pharaoh agreed to let the Israelites go if the plague would end. But once the plague was ended, he changed his mind and wanted to keep them as slaves. Even after the 10 plague, when the children of Israel fled Egypt, Pharaoh gathered his army and chased after them. They were afraid he chased them up to the Red Sea. The children of Israel were afraid and panicked, fearing that Pharaoh would capture or kill them. But God performed another miracle. He instructed Moses to raise his staff and the sea parted, giving the children of Israel a dry path to cross to the other side. Once all the children of Israel got to the other side, Moses put down his staff. The water came back together, covering the path and drowning Pharaoh and his army who were in the middle. The children of Israel were finally free from Egypt. This is Aidan Saunders giving you the conclusion of the 10 plague summary. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Saunders, for that wonderful wrap up of the primary lesson. At this point, we're going to move to junior and early teens, and that will be presented by Brother Ian Crookshank and Indigo. Uh, they were unable they were to, make unable it, to make it, all right? So, yes, she might be one of my favorite people. Yes, she attends every week, but that's not the only reason uh, she's the only one here with me today. All right, so Indigo, without further ado, uh, in the first lesson, The Voice, uh, which major Bible character were we introduced to? Um, we were introduced to John the Baptist. 
Okay. And uh, where did John the Baptist do most of his work? Um, he mostly did his work at the Jordan River where he told people to repent and he also baptized them. Okay. All right. All right. Um, in the next lesson, we kind of found out about um, the gates to our temple. And when they say our temple, what are they referring to, Indigo? Ourselves. Ourselves, okay. Like our so, mind, our okay, body, all right. Like so, our, our temple is us. So, we found out that and that we must guard the gates. And what were the gates to the temple? Do you remember? Our mind, mm -hmm. our minds, our mouth, our eyes, nose, anything we touch. So, anything we kind of interacted with. Why do you think that was important in terms of you know the gates? Why should we guard them? Why can't I just look at anything I like? Um, because certain things like sin can okay. enter the mind and that can distract you from God and what's important, you know. Okay, all right. Good, good, good. All right. And you're talking about distracting. We then went on to um, a lesson that was called Finding Friends. Now, um, what did you think was important about that lesson? Um, I thought that it was important that we should choose carefully who we have around us. Because okay. certain people can influence us to do certain things. Okay, all right. So, you know, um, we're learning that our choice of friends is important then, right? Correct. Um, we then, Jesus, as much as he found friends, there was one of the lessons where um, someone was trying to trick him into saying certain things. So, we discussed the importance of, of treating everybody well in the story, My New Neighbor. How, how would you wrap that story up? Um, according to Luke 10, verse 27, he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. All right. So loving our neighbor, which we then discussed was who? Is it just my next door neighbor or people that live in Mount Vernon? Everyone you come in contact with. Everybody we come into contact with. Okay, wonderful. Um, and the last few lessons were about Jesus's life and why his death um, saved humanity. Uh, how, how, what, what did you think about that? What did, what did you think? Why did Jesus die? He died to save us, of course. He died to save us. All right. And that's something that we shouldn't take for granted. For sure. Okay. All right. Um, and then I also told you, or we, not I, we did a lesson um, where we discussed uh, a certain biblical character called Judas. Mm, good or bad? Bad. Bad. All right. Anyway, Judas, I told the students, you won't find a dog called Judas anywhere in the world. Dogs are supposed to be loyal. There is nobody, nobody naming their dog Judas. All right. If you have a friend whose name is Judas, as much as we said, uh, treat everyone well, stay far from anybody called Judas. Agreed? I agree. <laughs> All right. All right. We also do um, the real-time lessons as well um, in our quarter based upon the age group that we have, which is also more geared towards Indigo's age group, but we discuss all of our lessons. However, um, Make Me Like Joe was a lesson that brought out um, someone wanting to follow someone's example. So why is, it, why is it important for us as Christians to give a good example, Indigo? Because we never know who's like watching us and like at that time what we're doing that may impact someone else's life. Like say we're just doing something bad and someone just happens to want to follow us. Right. Then they're also going to do bad things and that wouldn't impact them. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. And then we also had a lesson called the blind men and the elephant. What, what did you think the point of that story was? Um, that the same thing can be viewed differently. Mm -hmm. You know? Right, because in that story, five blind men touched different parts of an elephant and all described it differently, right? Correct. But it was an elephant. So we can't take away from their experience, but all of them had a different experience, although they encountered the same, the same animal. So, you know, what we got from that was that, you know, my Christian experience won't be the same as Indigo's and Indigo's may not be the same as mine. Well, not may not, will not be the same as mine. All right. But, you know, those are the kind of things that we discussed in that lesson. Um, one of my favorite lessons from the real time, uh, real time book was the one called Case of a Mistaken or Missed Identity. What do you think that lesson was trying to teach us, Indigo? Um, 
Okay, so throughout that lesson, mm -hmm. a guy was offered money to change his name. Right. Because that sounded better to the person who was offering the money. Right. Yet he was able to decline that man and stick with his name. Right. And, 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 and what was it they were trying to get across to us? That we as Christians, we mustn't do what, would you say? We mustn't, um, like we don't have a price. Right. We shouldn't sell Wonderful. ourselves out, you know. Thank you, thank you. Because what Jesus did for us was priceless, all right? Um, so all in all, uh, we believe it was a good quarter. Yes, Indigo? Yes, I all agree. Right? So um, if you could just finish off with saying a little about what you enjoy, and then we'll call it quits here. Well, I enjoyed Miss Claudia's company, Counselor Alexis, Miss Patrice, and how they present and discuss things with us and how we love their cahoots. All right. So listen, that's the end of the first quarter. Hopefully, Indigo and I will get a few other people to join us for the review of the second quarter. Take care and do the right thing, people. Bye-bye. Amen and amen. Thank you, Brother Cookshank and Indigo for that comprehensive wrap-up of the junior and early team lesson. I will always remember the quote that, yes, you won't even find a dog by the name of Judas. <laughs> All right, so here we are. We're now on to the adult lesson. And this complete quarter, we're studying the book or the epistle of Hebrews, the epistle of Hebrews. Now, normally on a Sabbath, we go through the lesson for only that specific week. But our task today is going to be to go through three months of three months of study in about 25 minutes. As I was walking up, I saw one of my favorite teachers, Elder Blair. He wasn't scheduled to be here, but he graciously, like the ram in the thicket, accepted the challenge to come and sit with me. So thank you, Elder Blair. Thank you for the invitation. All right. So, Hebrews, let's first set a little bit of the foundation. Who was this book written to? Who was it written by? And when was it written? So most theologians, we figure that Hebrews was written by Paul. We're not sure, but following the style of writing, most people argue that most likely it would be Paul. It was written, most accounts would believe, around 63 A.D., so Christ had died and gone back to heaven at that point, but um, it was written for a congregation that Paul had helped to raise. These were Jews, and they had been, they had accepted the new message. Now, the reason he wrote this long letter to them is because they had been practicing their new religion, and no one else around was practicing this religion. They were getting persecuted, they were getting scorned at, they were getting imprisoned, and they were not having a good time. Some of the congregation now had started to question whether this is the right thing to do. So Paul went through, and we will quickly cover what were the themes of this entire letter or sermon to these Hebrews who were going through a rough time. Anything to add, Elder Blair? No, the key thing to me is that what we find all the Bible, though it was written about the time period that they were experiencing, always has a point for us still today. That's the beautiful thing about it. It's an everlasting gospel that we hear because it never loses relevance. It's still important today as it was yesterday and will be tomorrow. Amen, amen. So just following up on what you said, then even though this was written to the Hebrews, I found, and just personally through my study this quarter, that everything that was said was relevant to us anyway. So thank you for that point. All right, so we'll take chapters one and two, which pretty, they cover the preeminence of Christ as the divine ruler and the deliverer of his people in chapters one or two, right? So here are these people, they're now a little bit discouraged and Paul is ex reminding them why they accepted this gospel. So I'll read verse one through three of Hebrews one. God who at sundry times and in diverse, and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, 
whom he appointed heir of all things, but by whom also he made the world, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Mm. You know, when we look at the fact that um, he said remind them because of the difficulties they're going through, and he's reminding them of the fact that, yes, the first Adam was, a lot of times I want to correct one thing before I go further. A lot of times people say that Satan is the ruler of this world. Uh, and he got that from Adam. Adam actually was the caretaker of this world. God always owned it. He was the caretaker of it. He was the manager. He relinquished his manager to Satan. So Satan became the manager of this world. Christ came and even took the management back from Satan mm -hmm. by showing that what, it, what his law was proven to the universe, that it is just and full, and took back even the management from the devil. And that's where we're living at right now. That's what I love about it. He was reminding them about that. Amen. Thank you for that, Elder Blair. So now, here are the believers. They're reminded that God is the ultimate champion. No matter what you're going through, here is the reason why you accepted the message. Mm -hmm. You accepted believing that Jesus, who was here on earth, is now risen. But they all, he was also telling them that not only is he risen, but he's at the right hand of God. So he is there looking down, providing you with the help that you will need. All right, so we're going to move very quickly to chapters 3 and 4. Now, chapters 3 and 4 specifically talk about rest. Rest. Now, it was interesting that Paul moved from assuring everybody that guess what? Christ is there, the person who you're worshiping is real, but the next thing he moved on to rest. And here, what, there were two types of rest mentioned. Not only was it the Sabbath day rest, but also the rest that we will get when Christ come back. So here we are working towards a goal, but your reward is this eternal rest. Yeah, it's, and you know, to me, it's, it's actually fitting to think about it. The people were now looking at the fact that they were being persecuted. So God, to me, in his ultimate wisdom, was leading him out to talk about the fact that here is relief, that I'm always with you, and the remi reminder of the Sabbath day uh, for it, a time to put aside. I always like saying that the Sabbath is a day that I have a letter from the ultimate physician. I don't have to worry about nothing. Anytime a problem comes, no, I got a letter here. Leave me alone. Okay, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And, and I look forward to Sabbath also, right? It's, it's one day where I know for sure the family's there at dinner on Friday, Sabbath night, and I looked forward to my Sabbath lunch, right? Mm -hmm. But not only for the food, but just for the chance of seeing family to stop all the daily rigor and everything that's going on and to come and worship with the Lord. Now, in, in those chapters, Paul went out of his way to remind them about the children of Israel, where they knew what they were supposed to do, but they ignored it. And because of that, they were not able to enter into the land of rest which was supposed to be Canaan. Mm -hmm. All of them eventually died. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, and the generation that actually entered after that were not the ones who disobeyed. So once again, it's a reminder to us that we know better, we should do better. I'll end with this quote. It says, we enter into God's rest when we consider and listen to his voice, and when we exercise faith in him, when we cease from our own efforts to earn salvation, and when we hold fast to the, our profession, and when we draw near to the throne of grace, those who will enter into this experience must beware of an evil heart of unbelief, that's from Hebrews 3 verse 12, and the hardening of their hearts, that's verse 8, 15, and 4 verse 7. 
they must strive to enter into God's rest. So it's provided for us. We just have to take advantage of it. All right, we're going to move on to chapters 6 and 7. And this you could spend the whole hour on. This is about Jesus as the faithful priest. Jesus, the faithful priest. So I'll give you the chance to start with that, Elder Blair. You know, we look at the fact that the earthly sanctuary was a symbol, symbol of what was going on in the heavenly sanctuary. And it looks, and we go from it, we realize the fact that whereas it, in all symbols, it's not the actual, it's like it. And the priest, for example, had himself had to make sure that his sins were forgiven because he had, was a sinner. And had he not, it was known when he went into the most holy, had, would also perish. So we now go to the point where we have the only one who has never sinned, the perfect being who became our perfect advocate as our high priest, who knows what we went through, went through it, but yet remained blemishless, never had an issue. Right, and, and thank you for that, Elder Beer. You know, the basic purpose of a priest when for the children of Israel was to mediate between the sinful people and God, right? The priests were appointed by God in order to minister on behalf of the human beings. Therefore, they needed to be merciful and understanding of human weakness. Mm -hmm. So now when Christ becomes our priest, he is the perfect person who has never sinned. This is not something he had to do, but he realized that sin separates us from God. Mm -hmm. he, he came in and he became that bridge between sin and God, because God cannot tolerate sin. Right. So here we go. Christ, in his mercy, accepted to be our priest and to come in and to mediate for us. The lesson brings out a huge point about Melchizedek. <clears throat> Melchizedek was recognized by Abraham as a priest, even though he was not from the tribe of Levi. Mm -hmm. And Paul brought this out to say, look, here was Melchizedek, a man who was respected enough to be called priest by, by um, Abraham, but just like how Melchizedek, a man, was able to do that, Christ, though not a Levi, was the perfect person. And he is actually a better representation, the most perfect priest we have, and we are blessed. Right. Yeah, it's beautiful because, as you said, showing that the Levites were the tribe originally that was set for it, and Christ was not from the tribe of Levites. And that's why they were saying that Mel, I call him Mel because I can never say his name correctly. That's why Mel <laughs> was there beforehand and he said was kind of a symbol of who Christ was, our, basically our ruler, high priest. All right. Thank you very much. It was just interesting that in the middle of Paul, now remember he started out saying, remember that, you know, here's the reason why you worship. Here's the reason why you're accepted. Then he went into rest that was provided. In the middle of talking about the high priest, he goes off totally in a different direction. And he says, no matter what you have going on, please keep strong. Do not fall away from Christ. So I think as we listen to these words, sometimes we get a little bit discouraged. Let us re remember Paul's admonition never to fall away from Christ. Amen. All right, so we're moving on to chapter 8, where Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. So Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6 says, But as it was, Christ has obtained a ministry that is much more excellent than the old, as the covenant he mediates is better, since it's enacted on better promises. So this is all about the new covenant. Thoughts, Elder Blair? I'm sorry, say it again. 
No, I said your thoughts on the new covenant. Oh, okay, sorry. I was looking at something. Um, we're looking at the fact that now, as far as being better, understanding that it actually, to me, as far as it is a continuation of it, we look at the fact that the understand that the everything originally was done was a, was a symbol of what was to come, of the heavenly sanctuary, and a symbol of Christ, what he was going to, him coming here, that his birth and what he would go through to become a high priest, all of it was symbolic. So now we have reached a different part in that journey where the covenant now is actually being fulfilled, not symbolically, but is literally happening now. We actually have Christ in the role, what all the symbols pointed to, the perfect high priest who's there because of his love for us, mediating for us unworthy beings. Perfect. It says, according to the Hebrews, the fact that Jesus was appointed priest according to the order of Melchizedek implied that a new covenant had been inaugurated. The old covenant had been given on the basis of the Levitical priesthood. Mm -hmm. The Levitical priests acted as mediators. So now that you have Christ as the new unblemished priest, it signified a change of the covenant also. So the old covenant was given on stones and written by God's hands, but the new covenant would be written where, Elder Blair? On the in our hearts. Perfect. So this new covenant that Christ was dealing with was, would be written in our hearts. Moving on to chapter 9. Chapter 9 says the perfect sacrifice. The perfect sacrifice. Now, it was interesting in the lesson that I did not realize that there were five types of sacrifice in the old system. There were burnt offerings for atonement. There were grain offerings for gratitude. Mm -hmm. There were fellowship offerings for communal meals. There were sin offerings. And there was a repatriation offering, right? Right. But as, so your thoughts, Elder Blair, on those old sacrifices and why they're no longer needed. I'm just going to take it from the lesson right here. We're looking at it. We're talking about the Holocaust offering. It represents Jesus whose life was consumed for us. The expiration required Jesus' total commitment to us. Even though he was equal with God, he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant. So Christ, once again, in his act, took what that, once again, the symbol of that was for. Then we go to the grain offering. The grain offering was a gift of gratitude for God's provisions of sustaining his people. It also represents Jesus, the bread of life, whom we have eternal life. The peace and fellowship offering implies a continuing meal with friends and family. And I love that part, showing the fellowship of it. Uh, you know, where Christ represented whose sacrifice provided peace for us. The sin or purification offering. This sacrifice emphasized the role of the blood of the animal, which represented its life. The provided redemption from sins and pointed forward to the blood of Jesus, who actually redeems us, because we know that the blood of animals can't. And then the guilt or reparation offering provides forgiveness. It tells us that God's forgiveness does not free us from responsibility to provide reparation or representation where possible to those who we have wronged. So it's basically the fact that God's forgiveness is there for us. We still have responsibility to go forward, take care of people, but his love for us, and he substituted the punishment that we have for our wrongdoings. All right. Thank you, Elder Blair. So now we're going to move on to chapter 9. Chapter 9 you know, speaks about Jesus opening a way through the veil. Now, it's interesting that in the Israelite system, there were three veils. There was a veil at the, 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 um, as you entered the court. Then there was a veil at the outer apartment of the sanctuary. And then an inner veil that separated the holy place from the Holy of Holies, right? Mm -hmm. And God was really serious about the veils because in Leviticus 16, verse 1 and 2, it says, And God spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said to Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not 
at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud on the mercy seat. So in the old system, there was a veil there between the, the holy and most and holy of most holies that you could not go in. Mm -hmm. But the lesson and what Paul is saying in chapter 9 is that Christ, when he died, that veil was split in two. Right. Christ has now entered into that ministry as our heavenly priest. And not only has he entered, but he has invited us also in with him. Mm -hmm. So now we can go to the throne of the grace boldly. We do have a mediator who converts our prayers into something that God could understand. But we, contrary to what some people say, we do not need someone to advocate for us. Christ provided that mechanism where we can enter into the Holy of Holies without any consequence. Right. Anything to add, Pat? Yeah, Ella Blair? It's, it's uh, going with that. We realize that, as you said, Christ is our advocate. Prior to it, the, we couldn't directly go, but we now have direct access to God through Christ, Christ, Christ who is, Christ God. is God. We can talk to, him, can directly. Talk to him directly. He, he makes, takes our prayer requests, takes all of our our uh, prayers, and then because of his blood, purifies it. So we had direct access to God because he died so that we would. Whole understanding the purpose of it was to reunite us to what was before sin. And that's what we're looking at. Okay. Moving on to chapters 11 and 12. Now, chapter 11 is called commonly the canon of faith. So if we say, I will start with the memory verse. It says, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for that joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I'll also pull for Hebrews 11, verse 11. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things, of things hoped hope. for and the evidence of things not, not seen. seen. Now, all through this chapter, what impressed me is that there are different types of faith. There are faith that says, well, the bus should come in one minute, and I'm going to start running now and hope in faith that I catch the bus. Or you could be looking at faith like Abraham, Moses, and Rahab, that were mentioned, some of the people that were mentioned. We're talking blind faith, where you don't know what's going on, and you literally just believe in God. And as we go through, I think we all should be looking for that blind faith, that unbelievable faith, that at any time, God can provide for us. I would switch a little bit of disagree. I don't necessarily consider it blind faith, quite kind of, because for me, it's based on the fact that I can see, I hear what has happened. I may not have the evidence of it, but I, I know that these people, for example, take Rahab, didn't see, heard the fact of what God had done for these people, these Israelites, how they won battles they shouldn't have won. And she believed in God based on what she heard with it. Now, she didn't have an exact record of it, but she said, there's got to be a God with these people because no one should be able to do these things. So not having a relation with him based on what she heard happened and knowing that these people should not have won the battles, she believed in it. And Abraham, uh, going with that, didn't, never saw what God promised him. But based on his relationship and what he had done for him thus far, he believed on it. So I, I think it's not so much a blind faith, but a faith based on the relationship that I have and trusting that because of your track record, this is going to happen as well. Amen. Amen. I love that. You said by based on your track record, you know God will come through for you, us. Now, on to lesson 13, the last, it says, let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. So with all his exhortation, Paul was going through and said, look, we have spoken about a lot of different things here, but no matter how discouraged you are, 
please make sure that you take care of your brothers. Why was that important? He said, there are times where you're doing a good deed and you don't even realize that you are entertaining angels unaware. He said also to take care of your leaders. He said also be careful of sexual immorality. And I'm going to end with the 20th verse from Hebrews. It says, here was, God, here was Paul's admonition to his congregation. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And he said, I beseech you, brethren, suffer the word of his exhortation that I have written in this letter. Amen. So let us remember these words. And Elder Blair, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. And at this time, we'll move over to seek his face. Lord, I long to seek your face, to worship, to worship you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Seek His Face. Elder Blair and Elder Lenny, we thank you so very much for the lesson review, and thanks to the lower division. It was so good to see and hear our kids today. Well, it's another week of um, prayer, intercession, intercessory prayer, praise, and deliverance. And we're going to repeat our theme text, which comes to us from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 4. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Welcome again, Sister Claudia. To Welcome. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Amen. We're going to um, repeat our text from last week. So we can four, verse six and seven. Be careful for nothing by an enemy, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let some friends be made known unto God. And the truth of God, all understand, shall keep your heart in mind to Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And another thing that we should keep in mind also is that when the roots of our faith are deep, there is no reason to fear the storms. Amen. Amen. No reason to fear the storms. We have some good news, right, Claudia? Amen. Good news indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have the greater role in the garden, primary duty. Early speaking, Teachers, we are very excited about our worship with our kids. Once again, parents, please, we are yes. pleading, asking, pleading, partner <laughs> um, with us and bring your children back to Sabbath school mm -hmm. in person. Um, starting April 2nd, we will start at 10 a.m. as always, and hope to see each and every one of you guys. We can do um, business right here without any without a commitment from all, well, we need a commitment from all parents, right? Mm -hmm. The partner and encourage the kid attending, support, successful return after two years. I'm finally gonna be here to you guys. Finally. I am. <laughs> we can't wait, we cannot wait. I can't wait for you to get back, back at church. Thank you in advance for your support, parents. Um, in Christ, the lover of the the Lord Division and Sabbath School teachers. We welcome you all. Can't wait. We are so excited to be tonight. Amen. And the other good news is that the Northeastern Conference Personal Ministry Federation is cordially inviting all of us, especially our seniors, 
to the new seniors and new believers banquet. It's the 13th annual seniors and new believers banquet. This will be held at Anton's Catering Hall in Queens Village on Sunday, July 17th, 2022 from 12 to 4 p.m. And our, the guest speaker is uh, our president, Dr. Abraham Jules. You don't want to miss this. So the purpose of the Senior Appreciation and New Believers Banquet is to show our gratitude and thanks to the seniors of our churches in the areas of missionary work, community services, Sabbath school work, and other ministries of the church, including winning souls for the Lord. Amen. Our seniors have been doing a great job. And also, it's this is also for the new believers. Um, to see how the seniors are appreciated amongst us. So, you know, if you are interested and you want to know more, please call the church's office 914-664-8586. Or if you have my number, you could call myself and just I'll give you all the other information that is needed for this banquet. So things are opening up now, you know, church is open, the kids are coming back, praise God. The Federation says, listen, it's time again to have our banquet for our seniors and new believers. Things are happening in our conference. So we just want everyone to be aware. So thank God for that. So for our special prayer request, um, we have the Shaco family, the Shaco and the Begot family. They are requesting prayers for healing, for grace and mercy for their sister, Pearl Abraham. Um, they're grateful for what God has been doing for her thus far, but really asking that God continues to hold him in his hands of mercy. Um, hold her in his hands of mercy. Uh, Judy B is uh, requesting prayer to continue to pray for my family, my, me and my family, and especially my grandchildren, for all those who, who are suffering with various health issues. Um, Margaret M is praying for her family, the Brambles, the best Headley families, and her granddaughter Rochelle, baby Noah, he's growing so nicely. And um, of course, Margaret also needs our prayers she is going to be undergoing surgery early next month. Monica J, Hermeline Forbes, and Sister Winifred Campbell, they are all praying for their children and grandchildren to come to a full knowledge of the Lord. And Sister Winifred Campbell also suffered another loss in her family. Just want to remember them um, that God will bring the comfort that they need. Also, Elder Travis Henry, Elder Randy Bishop, uh, you know, who lost his brother-in-law. And we also want to be praying for mental health. You know, this past Wednesday, the conference had a great um, pray and fasting session from 12 to 8. And they, they, they focused on our youth, mental health, evangelism, and Christian education. We want to continue that and um, praying for the folks in Ukraine, our Christian brothers and sisters in Ukraine and also in Russia. Sister Claudia. Worship the Lord your God, and his mercy will be on your food and water. Yes. I will take away sickness from amongst you. Exodus 23, verse 25. Yes. Patrice, we are praying to continue with our prayer for our, uh, our loved ones. Patrice Rose, we still pray for one fracture. Sister Kuhn, um, Rudy, Antoine, Cheryl, Laura David, Rose, Dr. Fett, Amy Rooster, um, Marvin David, Jibbeth, Mom, Wayne Campbell, um, we still pray for Matt, I heard Stormy, Laura Roman, Roman, diagnosed with leukemia, we still pray for your uh, sister, her name is Doris. Um, cancer is not in her breast, Velvet, um, Jamie, um, Cancer, Deborah, we live in the whole island in the Texas. Um, Joe, help me out with this one, Billy. Zaragoza. Zaragoza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are working to hear for God. We ask for your healing and need to cover every sickness and every wound, every part of it. 
Thank you that you are able to do far more than you could think and ask as a woman in battle. Thank you for your mighty power and on behalf of all your children and their parents. We are calling your name, Jehovah our God, our healing Lord. We know that you are restoring and beginning every place that has to call to every battle for your greater power. And we now stand in your power that each life you are here in Jesus' name. Father, we are for your children in this right now. Father, we pray for the women and the children. We pray for their safety. Father, we know there's a lot of predators out there, but we ask that you will cover them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for those that are of mental illness, Father, you are the God of your men, and I know that you have, um, you have for every one of your children. Touch them from the front of the head to so the feet, Father. Do for them, Father, what they cannot do for themselves. We pray for all of the essential workers. We pray for your um, nurses. Father, we ask that you will take care of them. Protect them from all um, sickness and pain. Thank you, Father, for being an answer to prayer. Thank you for we can call on that great name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 118, 24. Um, we have some celebrants uh, this week and even at the beginning of this month. We just want to acknowledge everyone. Jordan and Aaron um, Aline turned 27 years. You see those cute pictures of the baby when they were babies? <laughs> um, there was a story there. Um, they, <laughs> Their mom wants to wish them the very best and that God's blessing will continue to attend them in all that they do and that their lives will really glorify God. We praise God for that. Um, I know Keisha Anderson Saunders celebrated her birthday this this week as well. Elder Marie Hodge, um, Aunt Marie, everyone knows her as Aunt Marie, yes, celebrated her birthday on March, twin, um, will be celebrating her birthday on March 29th, sorry, and on March 31st, Camilla Williams will be celebrating her birthday, um, and April 1st, Sister Rosalind Best will be celebrating her birthday. So, for the, all the celebrants, folks, just remember them in your prayers, and give them a call if you do remember. Also celebrating this month was um, uh, Stacy Fairweather Willis. She celebrated earlier this month. We just want to acknowledge her as well. So may God bless them. Church, let us pray for our celebrants. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for these beautiful individuals you have blessed in our lives. We thank you for another year of life for them. We ask that you continue to bless and cover them, dear Father. Bless everything that they do i pray that it will glorify you in every endeavor that they partake in of father i ask their lord that you will establish the work of their hands so that others looking on will see that these these individuals are god's children so we thank you for blessing them again in jesus name amen she opens her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness, Father, the 31 person and completely. Good morning. Today we have a very first lady, Sister Lakeer. You're welcome, Mother. And happy Sabbath to you. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Amen. Share it in where prayer is a pivotal goal in your journey. Um, you know. Very recently, last October, I received the news that my contract at work would not be renewed. Mm. I enjoyed what I did. Uh, it was very meaningful to me, but I did not cry too much. I was afraid because I thought God is closing a good door, open an even better door. Mm -hmm. Because I had the dream of becoming self-employed, I would have better control over my time and my activities. And I've, I've been trying for two and a half years working at, at uh, building something. And I, I hit one closed door after another. And I said to myself, Lord, you're closing this door. That other one is going to open. And indeed, I became unemployed January 1st. 
and the doors started opening. And so maybe in the, in the future I can tell you more, but it's an instance very recently where God answered my prayer and satisfied my soul with a good thing. Amen. Amen. You know, we praise God for his his timing, uh, right, Sister Laguerre, in everything that pertains to our lives. You know, there's a saying that says prayer is the breath of our, our souls. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to know what practical suggestions can you share with us that, you know, has helped you in your prayer life? You know, this is what has helped me. Mm -hmm. I stand before God as a child. Amen. I say, God is the father. Mm -hmm. He is the old man. He is the one in charge. He has my best interest at heart. So when I desire something, if I do not get it, I just take it easy. And I ask for his peace to fill me. Because I know God is good. God is benevolent. He enjoys doing things just to please us. Not mm -hmm. for his sake, but for our sake. But his timing has to be perfect. Otherwise, what we think would be a grace might be a curse. Mm. So because he's, he knows the future uh, from, from uh, beforehand, he can strategize and put things in the yeah. right place. Mm -hmm. To me, asking God is a way of submitting to his will. And so, and Psalm 103 says emphatically, he satisfies your desires with good things. So when I want something good, God is on my side. He wants it for me too. And if I don't get it right then and there, he has a reason that, that defies my personal reason. And I take it easy. Amen, amen. We we so grateful for um, your encouragement, Sister Laguerre, because you know, for many of us, we worry when we don't see things happening the way we want them, our hope that they would, would happen, our work out for us, right? Even yes. as we're praying, because you said, God, you saw doors that were being closed and many of us get anxious about, about these things, but you take these things, you submit them to the Lord, to the Lord's will in prayer, right? And so we're right. grateful, yes, we're grateful for that. And I'm looking forward, we are looking forward to hear more about what you're gonna be sharing with us later on. So we thank you for being with us. You are a gracious first lady. We, we, we just love you so much and appreciate you. And I wanted to ask you to please say a prayer for those who may be at that crossroads in their lives right now, who needs a word of encouragement. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you for being available, willing and ready to assist us. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your strength that we can all harness so that we receive what is needed in our moment of need. And when we are happy, we want to come to you and share our gratitude yes. when we are perplexed we want to come to you so you would calm our anxieties lord visit us by your holy spirit bless the ladies of mount vernon bless the families of mount vernon and keep us strong and steadfast until the return of jesus christ our lord and savior it's in his name that we ask pray praise and thank you amen Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Laguerre. Thank you, Sister Claudia, for, for being with us on Seek His Face for the month. Um, the Women's History Month is done. It's done. It's the last Sabbath, and we give God thanks for your ministry to all of us. Um, we thank you, everyone, for joining us each week. Um, continue to send us your prayer requests, praise reports, birthdays, and anniversaries. And let us remember to believe in His Word. Say it with me hope in his promises as we continue to seek his face god bless you all Amen. yes church our announcements for today are this holy communion is today everyone is invited to participate in the most sacred service of our church today whether in person or virtual there's a special blessing in store for you prayer ministry 
There is power in prayer. It heals, renews, and restores. Please join Mount Vernon Prayer Ministries every Sunday for Sunday morning manna from 7 to 8.30 a.m. and every Friday for devotion from 6 to 6.30 p.m. My phone number is 646-558-8656. The pin is 8269 Got to make it bigger. <laughs> Start from getting the pin. It's 8265598279. And the passcode is 638226. Or just press double pound. When we pray, promises to answer. Ladies' Day. Calling all ladies to our first in person rehearsal for Ladies' Day's Chorale next Sabbath, April 2nd. Immediately after divine service. Please share the world with the ladies who are absent today and call those who you know who would love to participate. And we have good news. The Sabbath School Lower Division is very excited about worshiping with our kids once again. Parents, please partner with us and bring your children back to Sabbath School starting Sabbath, April the 2nd, next Sabbath. We will start at 10 a.m. and hope to see the children there. We can't do this without a commitment from you. Encourage the kids to attend and support a successful return to us. We can't wait to see the kids in church. Thank you for your support. And then the education survey link. We are asking that our department heads share this link that we sent out regarding trends in education. Please share the link with your committee, members, family, and friends in our church. The deadline for the survey is April 4th, 2002. Thank you.
I hear you humming, I hear you singing, because our God is great, is he not? If we serve a great God, I dare you to stand on your feet. Let us declare how great he is. It's the Sabbath. We've come to rejoice. We've come to give him praise. We've come to give him glory. We've come to give him honor. Let's lift our voice as we sing this wonderful hymn of the church. Everyone, everywhere, visually, virtually, then sing my soul. God. He's a mighty, mighty good God. How great. One more time. You're going to declare this today. Then sings my soul. Let's declare together how great. Come on, clap your hands, O Zion. Shout unto God with the voice of trying. He's a great God. Let your neighbor know, say, neighbor, he's a great God. We're letting you know today, Mount Vernon, that we serve a great God. He's a mighty, mighty good leader. He's so great. He's so mighty. He's so strong. There is no God like our God as we sing, come before his presence. 
I'm so excited today because we come together to eat his broken body, to drink his spilled blood. He died in our place. If that's not a reason to get excited, I don't know what is. So I don't know what you came to do, but I came to lift my hands. I came to clap my hands. I came in maybe even to do a little dance because he's been good. I don't know about you. We complain about the gas prices, but we're still able to go here and there. We got money to pay for it. If it wasn't it maybe 10 years ago, it wouldn't have been like that. But our God is good. Even in spite of inflation, his blessings are also inflated. So join us today as we sing, come before his presence. Wherever you are, in the building, virtually, lift your hands, lift your voice, come before. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. The Bible says, enter into his courts. Enter into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him. And it repeats, and be. And be thankful unto him. For he is worthy, worthy of all praise. Come. Psalm says, enter into his courts. Enter into his courts with praise. And be. And be thankful unto Anybody him. thankful this morning? And be. And be thankful Hands should be lifted. Mouth should be open. For he is worthy. Is worthy. Come on, brag about our God. Worthy. Worthy of all Yes, he is worthy of all praise. You know, I, I just have to say that I, the other song comes to my mind. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. Are you glad, Mount Vernon? Let me hear you say glad. Let's put a hand clap for God real quick right now. Let him know that we are happy because he is worthy to be praised. And we are glad to be here to be praised his holy name because he brought us through this week. As he said, gas prices are extremely high and may go higher, but God has enabled us to still get through we are because you're here. So he is definitely worthy to be praised. In this moment, let us bow our hands in prayer to our Heavenly Father. Our gracious, loving God, 
we love you more than we can even know because you love us more than we can understand. You love us more than we love ourselves. And we thank you for that, dear Lord. We thank you for the fact that we are here, that last night was not our last night, but you gave us the gift of life one more time, dear Lord, on this blessed Sabbath day to give praise and honor to your holy name. So we lift up you on high, dear Lord. Let our hearts be filled with the message that you bring today. Let us rejoice in brotherly love to one another and sisterly love to each other that your name may be praised. Should there be any glory, let it go to you. For you are our Father and truly worthy to be praised. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you all right now. Uh, and welcome to our audience in, per in person and those online. We want to welcome and thank you for joining us today in Mount Vernon on this blessed Sabbath day. In we want to basically, in the name of our past senior pastor, Pastor Edna Gear, our board of elders, our deacons, and our congregation, we all welcome and thank you for coming here today. We know that you could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here to worship with us. And for that, we want to give honor and praise to you and thank you, dear Lord. Have a blessed day, Melbourne. Thank you, Elder Blair, for that wonderful welcome. Well, it's still Women's Month, amen? And we love our women, amen? Can I get the men to just affirm by saying amen? We love our women, amen? Amen. We love our strong queens. We are to protect them. Some of us haven't do, been doing a good enough job in protecting our queens. But if you saw this week, it was on display for the world to see how disrespectful, how demagogic, how rude. Hmm. We're streaming, so I got to be very careful. Our brothers and sisters of a different hue, despite us being qualified, getting asked questions that has nothing to do with the job that they were nominated to do. So JJ, if you could put those pictures up as we culminate and conclude this Women's History Month, I thought this would be fitting than any children's story could do because our young girls are watching. My granddaughter is watching. Your daughters are watching to see how the world perceives them all because of the color of their skin. To many, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson's appointment is a clear example of affirmative action. And she is having her qualifications questioned. But out of the 115 people that have been confirmed to the Supreme Court, 40 of them were never a judge before being nominated for the highest court in the land. 18 of them never completed law school. 47 of them never even attended law school. We're talking about out of 115 now. Meanwhile, my judge, your judge, Katanji, went to Harvard Law School and was the editor of the Harvard Law Review. Having been a judge for nine years, she was also a criminal defense lawyer and she had three federal clerkships, including clerking on the court which he is now nominated to be a part of it's amazing to me that dozens of blank men and women on this court didn't even have a law degree but nobody asked them about their qualifications nobody questioned their rulings no one questioned their judgment. Actually, one justice paraded that he was drinking booze and doing things to women. 
But one black lady since 1789 has the potential of being confirmed and suddenly people are worried about qualifications. They battered her with inane questions, <laughs> but she didn't cry. They badgered her with insults and outright lies about her judicial decisions, <laughs> but she didn't cry. They interrupted her rudely, not allowing her to make salient points, but she didn't cry. They tried to diminish her excellence before a world stage. <laughs> but guess what, church? She didn't cry. They tried to belittle her, Daisy, before her family with her daughter beaming with pride. But she didn't cry. They brazenly, Brian, disrespected her. They disrespected this phenomenal, unsaleable black women showing just who they were and displaying their lack of character but yet she didn't cry but oh thank God for Senator Cory Booker <laughs> Senator Cory Booker honored her he covered her he lifted her up above the fray and affirmed her and only then when she was safe from all harm, her tears flowed. And I don't know if you were watching because my tears started flowing. So take a quick peek of the words of affirmation that Senator Cory Booker said. And I'm talking to the men now. Our men, whether you're here visually or whether you're watching virtually, it's time to step up and protect our black women. I said it's time for us as men to step up and protect our black women. They are the most unprotected. Who will stand in the gap? Black men, take your place as kings and protect. I've told pastor this. I've told Elder Davis this. I said, I'm a Christian. But when you mess with my wife, when you mess with my daughter, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not ashamed, but I will protect my queen and my friends that are also queens to the utmost. So watch Senator Booker affirm her. And then to culminate our Women's History Month, I'll ask Monique, Elder Monique Weatherly to come up and offer a prayer of affirmation. We'll ask all our women to stand as she offers this prayer of affirmation as we watch this clip you did not get, did not there, get there because of some left-wing agenda you didn't get here because of some dark money groups you got here how every black woman in America who's gotten anywhere has done by being <laughs> like Ginger Rogers said I did everything Fred Astaire did but backwards in heels <laughs> And, and so I, I'm just sitting here saying, nobody's stealing my joy. Nobody's going to make me angry, especially not people that are called in a conservative magazine demagogic for what they're bringing up that just doesn't hold water. I'm not going to let my joy be stolen because I know you and I, we appreciate something that we get that a lot of my colleagues don't. I know Tim Scott does. When I first came to this place, I was the fourth black person ever popularly elected to the United States Senate. And I still remember a lot of mixed people, white folks, black folks work here, but at night when people are in line to come in to clean this place, the, the, the percentage of minorities shift a lot. And so I'm walking here, first week I'm here, and somebody who's been here for decades doing the urgent work of the Senate, but it's the unglamorous work that goes on no matter who's in offices, the guy comes up to me, all he wants to say I can tell is, I'm so happy you're here, but he comes up and he can't get the words out. And this man, my elder, starts crying. And I, I just hugged him and he just kept telling me, it is so good to see you here. It's so good to see you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
I, I love my brother, Tim Scott. We could write a dissertation on our disagreements. He gave the best speech on race. I wish I could have given as good of a speech. But talking to the challenges and indignities that are still faced. And you're here. I was in the White House with my Democratic colleagues and I'm, again, I'm in my joy. I can't help it. <laughs> and, and, and the president's asking our advice, who should we nominate and whatever. And I look at Kamala and we have a knowing glance which we've had for years, when she and I used to sit on this end of this committee at times. And then I try to get out to the president what it means, what it means. And I wanna tell you, when I look at you, this is why I get emotional. I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're a person that is so much more than your race and gender. You're a Christian, you're a mom, you're, you're, you're an intellect, you love books, but for me, I'm sorry. I, I, it's hard for me not to look at you and not see my mom, not to see my, my cousins, one of them who had to come here and sit behind you. She had to, be, she had to have your back. I see my ancestors and yours. Nobody's going to steal the joy of that woman in the street or the calls that I'm getting or the texts Nobody's going to steal that joy. You have earned this spot. You are worthy. You are a great American. Amen. Amen. Those are powerful words from Senator Booker. May all our ladies and our young girls please stand for this affirmative word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this moment in time where we can witness history in the making. Lord, you see the traps and the snares that were set before Judge Jackson. And Lord, in a similar manner, there are traps and snares set up against us as women. Oftentimes we are seen as less than as not as worthy because of the color of our skin and our gender. Lord, let us be reminded that you have set a standard and that we are daughters of the King. And as such, Lord, we should hold up our head high, do the best we can in whatever we are doing, Lord, whether it be at work, whether it be at school, whether it be at home and even in your house of prayer, the church. Lord, I pray that we will be encouraged and that we will know that we are enough and that God has, have, has us in the palm of his hand, holding us up in times where we feel hurt, in times that we feel ridiculed, in times where we feel like we are fought against. Lord, help us to remember who we are and whose we are. Help us to remember that there are little girls watching us looking up to us as an example and i pray that they will understand that they too can make a difference they too have a divine purpose which god has set before them and with your help O oh lord they shall be faithful to complete it so lord as we come to the end of this women's history month i ask that we are continually reminded that we do belong and that we have power from above to help us accomplish all that we can ever ask or think. Lord, wherever I fail to ask you, fail not to grant it upon us. And I pray that you'll continue to bless us as ladies, as young girls in all that we endeavor to do. Help us not to be discouraged, but to ever be encouraged in you. These mercies I ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. There's power in prayer. We're going to sing the morning's hymn, Marvelous Grace of our loving Lord, freely bestowed on all who believe. We've already had you stand, so that's okay. If you can sing this song lustily, if you're impressed to get up because of God's grace, you can do that as well. 
If you so desire to stand, I won't ask you to stand, but if you want to stand, we just stood for a little bit, but if you want to stand, you can stand as we sing this great hymn of the church. Marvelous grace, everybody say. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds. Grace that exceeds. Our sin and our guilt. Our sin and our guilt. Yonder on. Yonder on Calvary's now, now poor. There where the blood. There where the blood of the Lord. Come on, lift your voice and say grace. grace. The sea waves. Threaten the soul. With infinite. Grace. Points to the refuge. Come on, if you're glad about God's grace, say grace. From the 32nd division of the Psalms, verses 1 through 5. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed, hold through my roaring all the day long. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into, 
into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. The New Testament reading is taken from 1 John 2 verses 1 to 3. My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perpetuation for our sin, and not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. I'm not going to wear out the strength of the saints. If you feel like you want to be seated, please have a seat. Um, it is prayer time, and I just want to tell you how happy I am for you today. Today is the best day of your life. Amen. Today is the best day of your life because we are now going to be taking communion. This is communion Sabbath. This is the time when we can get it right, right? And the Bible tells us, Paul says, and we've been studying Hebrews throughout the quarter. Paul says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, it says, make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see God. We are um, caught up we are focused on a lot of different things, right? Um, you got to make your money. You got to educate your kids. You got to love your, your family. You do a lot of things that we have to do. But the most important task that we have as Christians is to live holy lives. The problem with that is this. Paul says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? And that's why we have communion. So on this communion Sabbath, we will turn our attention to the only true source of holiness. When we go through communion, this puts us in a right space with God because without holiness, we can't see him, right? So you, this, is your, this is your time. This is, this is the best day of your life. I know for myself and probably for you too, we mess up, don't we? We have intentions, but we fall short. Paul says that the good that I want to do, I don't do, right? You can finish it for me, right? And the evil that I don't want to do, that I keep on doing. But today, we get God's grace, don't we, Des, right? So I'm going to invite you to um, bow your heads and pray during this communion Sabbath um, that God would do something special for us. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for the privilege and the honor of being able to come before you today. Father, we acknowledge that you are our Father. We acknowledge that you are holy. We acknowledge, Lord, that you are supreme in all regards. We, however, are nothing like you. We are not worthy to come into your presence. Father, we sin on a daily basis we sin on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, Father. We are unholy. We are corrupt at the core. Father, we stand in desperate need of something different in our lives because all of us are sinners, standing in desperate need of your grace. But Father, you showed us the love that you have for us, that your love for us is stronger than our sin, that you love us so much that you'd, you were willing to die for us. And so, Father, we ask that you would 
forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, I ask that your spirit would move on everyone that is in this church. Help us, dear Lord, to take a personal inventory, to examine our lives truly and at the core. Father, we pray that you would search us and that you would know us and that you would see if there be any wicked thing in us. And Father, we pray that you would give us the wisdom and give us the courage give us the faith and give us the determination to put those things down we know what they are you have already convicted us of our sin and for that conviction lord we give you thanks lord we keep messing around we keep messing up and so father we understand that we are incapable of doing right we try time and time again yet we continue to fall flat on our faces it's not in us Lord to do right it's not in us to follow you so father we ask that not only would you forgive us but that you would fill us with your spirit that you yourself would live inside of our hearts so that we could render unto you the holiness that is required to see your face father we thank you that Jesus is who he is even though our situations are tough even though the stains of our sin seem irremovable father Jesus is everything Jesus is sufficient Jesus is all-powerful and father we pray that the spirit of the living Christ would live in us so that we can walk this Christian life anew Father, we pray that not only would we walk that Christian life, but Father, we pray that we would love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our strength. Lord, we pray that you would help us to love you with every fiber of our being. Father, you said that the world would know that you love the world by the love that we show to each other. So, Father, I pray that you would help us to love each other in Christian love the way you told us to. Father, we pray that you would help us to not love the world, to not love the things of the world, to not even love ourselves, but to put you first in all things. Father, we know that based on our track record, there's no reason for us to believe that this can be done. But we don't approach you by fact. We approach you through faith. Lord, we believe in Jesus. We believe that he is risen. We believe that he has power and that he can change us, that he can cleanse us, and that he can set us right. That's what we stand in desperate need of. Father, there's so many things for us to pray for, but on this communion Sabbath, Lord, I pray that you would move your church to seek your holiness. There are many issues that are going on in our community. There are many issues that are going on around the world. There are many issues that are going on in the church. There are many issues that are going on in our families, but help us, Lord, to put first things first. It does not matter what we have, what we wear, what we drive, where we live. It does not matter if we gain the whole world, yet lose our own souls. Father, we pray for every family. We pray that you would be the center of our families, that you would be the anchor of our families. We pray that that Christian love that should permeate our hearts, that we would give it to each other freely without any requirements on the other. Father, we pray that you would help us to put aside our differences and our strife. We pray, dear Lord, that we would be unified the way Christ prayed that we'd be unified. Father, he prayed that we would be unified with each other, but he prayed more than that. He prayed that we would be one with you as you are one with him, and that all of us, Lord, would be one in you. That's my prayer. We're not there yet, but I believe we will be. Father, I pray that you would bless every person that is under the sound of my voice. Father, for those who have challenges in their life, be it uh, physical, be it 
financial, be it um, job related, be it family related, be it mental health related. Lord, I pray that whatever our challenges are, help us, Lord, to believe that you love us so much that you will handle our situations in the way that you see best. Father, during this communion service, Father, we pray that you would purify our hearts, purify our minds, purify our walk so that heaven would know that we are children of the Most High. Father, I pray that you would be with the pastor as he breaks to us the bread of life. Father, we pray that the words he speak would resonate deeply within our hearts and that it would move us to get to a better place. Move us to a closer walk with you so that every day on a, on a routine basis, we become more like you, we become better prepared for your soon coming. Lord, you are coming soon. The world is falling apart right before our very eyes. A blind man can see that you're coming soon. Father, we pray that you would help us to be ready. We pray, dear Lord, that not only would we be ready, but you would put it in our hearts to help somebody else to be ready. Because whether we realize it or not, we are our brother and our sister's keepers. Help us, dear Lord, to look out for each other. Help us, dear Lord, to love each other. Your word says that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will grow cold, and that is a sign of the last days. We've seen that coldness in the Supreme Court hearings. We see that coldness in the news every day, but Father, we pray that the warmth of your love and of your grace will always burn within our hearts, and that we would be a source of your love, that we would be an avenue of your grace, that wonderful grace that we sang about earlier. Father, we pray that when everything is said and done, that it does not matter how many church services we go to, it does not matter uh, how many Bible texts we know, the thing that matters is that we have a relationship with you and that our relationship with you puts us in a place that when you come again, you realize that you cannot live without us. Father, we pray that you would save us. Father, we pray that you would rescue us. And we believe these things and we ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Let the church say amen. This week, I was um, studying boundaries. I use this app to help me uh, connect with the Lord and to help me meditate on the Word. So the topic this week, all week, was boundaries. And um, you're probably wondering, what does boundaries have to do with tithes and offering? Well, I want to share this beautiful verse that I found that uh, was part of this week's study. And um, it's so beautiful because it's actually God's words. And I'm going to read it to you. 
because uh, I want you to hear what a poet the Lord is. It's his words. I, I pray that I do it justice. It is in jo Job 38, and it's from 8, verse 8, to verse 11. And here it goes. Who kept the sea inside its boundaries as it bursts from the womb? And as I clothed it with clouds and wrapped it in thick darkness, for I locked it behind barred gates, limiting its shores, I said, this far and no farther will you come. Here, your proud waves must stop. Isn't that beautiful? The Lord is a poet. That's where we get it from. All this time we thought it was us. It's all him. Okay? It's so cool. So here's the thing. How is this relevant to, to tithes and offering? By the way, I'm just going to say that again. Job 30, Job 38, 8 to 11. Okay, you can read that on your own. And, and, and it will say at the beginning of the chapter, it will tell you those are his words. So, boundaries and tithes. Here's what happens. Why do we give tithes anyway? Wah, wah, wah. We're always whining about tithes and offerings. Okay, yeah, I hear you. But here's the thing. The world tells us that we always need to buy something to make us feel complete to make us feel more joyful. Um, I even, I, I don't know if he's able to get this, but I actually saw something in a store that said, wants equals needs. Look how far we've gone. All right, wants are now needs. How many wants is enough? It's a question, okay? And so here's what happens. I believe, this is just what I believe, that the Lord commanded us to return tithes and offering so that we don't believe the world's nonsense. They're always telling you, you need a new pair of shoes. You need to upgrade your phone. You need to upgrade your car. Okay. You need to. Okay. But they never tell you how to share. The Bible tells us that tithing or I believe that the Bible tells us that tithing is to remind us that we have to honor the Lord. It tells us to honor the Lord first. And through offerings, we, other, we honor others. And one of the things that happens when we get an entire check is that we can't wait to spend it. But when we're trying to spend it, do we stop and think about who we're going to spend it on, not just what we want? So the Lord, I think, I think that he said, you know what, to, through tithes, they'll remember to honor me first, to remember that I'm the one who gave them all these things to begin with, or if not anything else, gave you the ability to get them, right? So then offerings are to help us and each other so that we can stop thinking about just how do we spend all our money, but how do we share our money? How do we share what the Lord has given us, our resources with others, how do we stop thinking about what we want? Okay? So I think it's a safeguard. It's a boundary to help, to help us focus on Him and on each other. Yes? So I really liked my work, my, my reading on boundaries this week. It, te it teaches us to be more global when we return tithes and offering. It teaches us to be more thoughtful. And it teaches us, above all, to be grateful and dependent on the Lord. If that's not going to convince you, I don't know what will. <laughs> so, keep those thoughts in mind. Think about how we can help others as we wait for them to finish collecting the tithes. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so very much for the opportunity to be able to give back to you, for the opportunity to honor you with our tithes and our offerings. 
we ask that you distribute the monies, the tithes, and the offering the way you see fit to cover the people that need to be covered with it, to enhance your church, and to encourage us to continue to be grateful and to give. And for those who have not given yet, continue to bless them, Lord, the way you already do. Because you bless the givers and you bless the non-givers because you love us. That's your only motivation, love. And for that, we thank you. And we ask you to help us, teach us how to love you in every way. In Jesus' name I ask, amen.
We say amen. Well, Brother Jamal, thank you for reminding us that God is always faithful. In these days, my brothers and sisters, it is of utmost importance for God's church to remember the words of the prophet Jeremiah when he said, because of the Lord's great, Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Though I don't have it now. You know, this morning I read something that says the, the, the difference between uh, someone who has faith and someone who's positive about things. Someone is an optimist. An optimist is based on data. Based on what we have, yes, things will work. God does not want Christians to be optimists. Because there's a moment you will not have any confirming element to tell you what you are thinking will come to pass. Everything will say it's impossible. That's why optimism is not a Christian virtue. It's good for someone to be optimist. It's nice. However, when you are dealing with God, you have to deal with faith. Faith is the substance of things, not sin. You don't see it. The only thing you hold to, don't do is God's faithfulness. Blessed be the name of God. Today is a very special day. You know, tablecloth, tablecloth, a table covered with white tablecloth. As Seventh-day Adventists, we know what that means. It can be a tradition, it can be also something very meaningful that prompts us to an analyze our lives and ask God, how are we doing, what shall we do? Today, the Seventh-day Adventist Church concludes the study of the book of Hebrews. We spent the whole quarter looking into the book of Hebrews. And to, to summarize it, just simple word, the blood of Jesus Christ. That's all it is. Is that Elder Davis? You studied it, lesson with Dr. Cox, and the whole church studied the book of Hebrews. Uh, the, the words that are very common, the blood of Jesus Christ, assurance, access. We can approach God's throne. Today also is the last day of uh, Women History Month. I'd like to uh, say thank you to Des for thinking of that clip. Yesterday when you sent it, I, I was questioning, is that something we can show on Sabbath? I did. I, that's why I told you, let's wait. And I looked into it, I pray about it. And I say, I think it's great. Why it's great? Because when, whenever somebody attacks your identity, the person is being fed by the devil himself. When some, whenever somebody questions your right to be alive, the person is playing the role of the advocate of hell. So whenever we see what God has done, especially what Booker said about you are a Christian. Because there's a big issue now within the black community. Those who are turning their back to God. Once they excel, they don't go to church. They change their sexual orientation. They attack the church. So whenever someone has arrived, per se, and remains true to God and to the Christian faith, the church must celebrate. I praise God for what I heard. I praise God, Monique, thank you for the prayer of dedication. Let's say amen. amen. Today, great things happen. We have a scholar, I consider her to be a scholar, Sister Daisy. She stood here and spoke. I always want her to speak. And after you spoke, I concluded, anybody who has a job, who does not want to be faithful to God, read Job. 
38. Boundaries. Brothers and sisters, you know why today is good? I want to keep the focus on God. That's why I'm just going to quickly say, because as pastors, you go through churches, you spend five years, some pastors spend two years. I look at the book, some pastors spend three, four years. That's a part of Adventism. To remind us that nobody goes to, you know, it, this church has only one name, Mount Vernon Seventh Adventist Church. Praise God. Somebody says, I go to Pastor X, Pastor Z, Pastor Y's church. But the Seventh Day Adventist Church, it's a God church that belongs to no one. So, Pastor Seventh Day Adventist pastors come and go. And sometimes, you know, they just spent three, four, five years, seven years. Like me, I came here in 2015, uh, almost seven years ago next month. And then it's time as as our organization uh, operates, you know, to go to a different pastorate. And what a blessing to spend my, not my last Sabbath with you because we have so few Sabbaths together. However, you know, the last communion I'm spending with you. Remember, I don't say the last supper. Because, <laughs> because somebody always dies after the last supper. <laughs> you know, it's the it's last communion service. And it means, it means if it, it's very meaningful today that we are affirming, we are confirming it. You see, God is still faithful. The source of our power is not based on the stock market, neither on Congress, neither on the Senate. The source of God's power is in Jesus Christ, who is the high priest, the eternal high priest interceding for his church Hebrews 10 verses 19 to 24 I'd like you to read with me you may remain, remain seated let us read therefore brothers therefore therefore you know everything that has been said before based on the, all the elements that I have presented to you that's basically what Paul is saying Based on what we looked into, therefore, let us conclude, therefore, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have confidence, we have the surety, we will enter the holy places. For those of you who just uh, may not fully understand the concept of holy places, it's where God is, the throne of God, the very presence of God. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have access to God himself. That's why as Seventh-day Adventists, we don't pray to saints. Every time, you pray, every time you pray to a saint, you are basically downplaying the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why I tell my Catholic friends and wherever, please don't introduce anybody else into having access to God through you the only way you can access God is through the blood of Jesus Christ you don't have to pray Saint Peter Saint Mary Saint John that's why I was, like, I was a Catholic as a boy I left not because of anything it's because I have to rule to a human being to access God the only person who gives us access to God is Jesus Christ himself we have full access to God by the blood of Jesus Christ and that's why every quarter we have this service here reminding you that you, you, you get paid okay you know your landlord allows you to stay the bank gives you the loan your doctor can give you the medication the surgeon operates on you but ultimately your life is in God's hands and that's why you have to constantly be reminded that your life does not depend on the whims or the temperament of man. Your life is closely related to what God himself has decided. And verse 20, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. Verse 21, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, praise the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Let us join here because of what Christ has done. We can be close to him. Hallelujah. With our hearts sprinkled clean 
from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Then he said, verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. You no, know, but Jamal, you chose that, that, that song today. You didn't know that I was going to talk about God's faithfulness. You know, God is good, my brothers, my brothers and sisters. God is in this place. The Holy Spirit is operating in the hearts of, of God's children. You know, we can move because he, made the, he who made the promise is faithful. He's going to do it. Let us approach him with confidence wherever you are. You don't have to go to any special building. Wherever you are, you can go Wi-Fi with God. Because of the, of the blood. Then he adds, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. That's basically what it is. If you are in harmony with God, you will care for your neighbor. And that's what communion is all about. Hebrews summarizes it. You see, Christ has, before we even took communion, we wash each other's feet to acknowledge the presence of the neighbor. This business of the right-wing evangelical church here in America, talking, fighting against abortion, rightly so, fighting against all the things that they don't like, yet allowing the police officers to kneel on our necks cutting all the social programs, being called conservative. When in fact, if the church, if, the, if blacks want some help, well, that's the shame of it. Only the liberals will get a break, the lesbian and the gay groups. The very people who are supposed to stand for God, the religious people of America, calling being called the Bible belt. It should be called the Bible chant. They are the ones who are siding with a given party to sacrifice a whole race. Immigrants. So he says here, if you are, if your conscience is cleaned by God, verse 24 said, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. You see, the French, when I read it in French, you know the word that they use in French? The verb? They use the verb provoke. To provoke each other to love. And then it's a very strong word in a sense that you are determined to show to your brother that you love him. My brothers, without love, we may close down this church. And that's why I've told Mount Vernon, this church must be known as the church of brotherly love. You, anybody who comes, you don't have to know the person. Approach that person, shake the person's hands. When the person comes here, it's not a fashion show place. It's nice to look good, but there's, there shouldn't be no clique, no special group, no this and that. Praise God, the blood of Jesus Christ unites our hearts and we should provoke each other to love and kindness. And, and, and that's why, you be crazy, say hello. Stop, so, shake somebody's hands. How are you? Where are you from? You know, you, you, know, you, you can just say, you know, the ride, the ride, but you know, five bucks, six bucks, you know, pay, pay Uber. Nowadays, you can just pull your phone, press the button, Uber. Uber eats, Uber rides. There are many things that you can do to love one another, my brothers and sisters. The book of Hebrews said, because of Jesus' love, we have access to God and we will not go alone. Let us provoke each other. Be purposeful about it. The person doesn't say hello. You walk, you say hello. When I say, he doesn't say hello, I'm not going to say hello. Then you start moving your head. Something like that. There's nothing like that. You know, there's no room for indifference. This church here, the book of Hebrews said, because of what Christ has done, you have access to God and because you know God, because you'll be exposed to God, because you absorb the power of God, you should be a ball of love rolling in Mount Vernon. 
Hebrews 6, 13. Then, and Paul moves. Hebrews 6. We start from verse 13. Why should we be so confident? How are we going to survive the onslaught of God's church? For when God made a promise to Abraham, why are we excited? Because he who made the promise is faithful. He doesn't lie. Praise God, God does not lie. Whatever he says, he will do. That's why the whole question of uh, Daisy, the whole question of tithing offering, I must have a confession. I, I feel a little embarrassed sometimes telling people to be faithful in your tithes. You know, I, I, you know, because if you could understand what God has done for you, no one should tell you to be faithful to God. Can you believe that? Discover God. MasterCard, they're faithful to me. They're faithful to me. Every time, American Express, don't leave them without it, but you still have to pay it. Listen, they're faithful to me. I just, I buy something online. I use my Discover card. As I press the button to say pay, it, within seconds, Discover asks me, is that you? I press yes. But my MasterCard is even tougher. They block, they block the, the purchase. And they send me a message, press yes if it's you. And I press yes. Then they say, it's clear. Discover watches over me. So does MasterCard. Do you understand, my brother said, when you understand that the reason why they watch over you because they charge you 25%. When I look at it, you're paying $112 per month for interest. That other year, that's over to $1,200 you give away. They watch over me for interest. So if yeah, they watch over you because of interest, the great, God's greatest interest in you is your salvation, which is free. So the God you serve, he's faithful. God, he swore by himself to Abraham, surely I bless you and I will multiply you. When you think of a hundred, a man who's hundred years old having a child, there is not a miracle. Nothing, nothing, nothing before Lazarus was resurrected. Abraham was. Abraham, verse 15 say, after having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. Verse 16, for people swear by something greater than themselves and in all the disputes on, on oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise, the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. Jesus Christ is our refuge. When you don't understand, all you have to say, you did it for Abraham, you can do it for me based on what you did in the past. When God presents, God, get, get God's resume. Check what he's done. He has never failed anyone. He's been faithful to you. He's been faithful to me. Therefore, we want to be faithful when you consider 10% of your, I'll just return it to God, 15% to God. By the way, a lot of people pay more money to the mafia for protection. So I, I, as God's children, you are saved by faith. Blessed be his name. Then I'd like to continue here. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. A hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. Can you believe that? Because of what Christ has done, because of his blood, because of his sacrifice, it has become an anchor for your soul. 
and most anchors go down our anchors goes up and go straight hooked to the throne of God you are connected you don't make the anchor God makes the anchor and connects it to your soul then you have access to God because Jesus has gone in as a forerunner on our behalf having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek you know my brothers and sisters the purpose of these verses in chapter 6 is encouragement for in order for Christians to move beyond spiritual immaturity they need to experience a sense of confidence in their faith sometimes we are too immature sometimes you know we, we are scared for nothing sometimes we think that somebody can can kill us my when you really consider it my brothers and sisters if all your hairs are counted whatever is left or whether you purchase it or borrowed it whatever all I can tell you your hair they are counted if you sit and think about it a Christian should never be anxious because God is watching over you circumstances may not come clear you may look like a loser but ultimately the, the one who puts his faith in God never loses and that kind of faith is an anchor an anchor so that you don't be not immature your, your assurance must come naturally when you when you think about Abraham will your anchor hold you know this morning I'm as a praise team thank you you know we're gonna put on the screen they're gonna sing the first stanza and all of you will sing the chorus we are that's how we finish the book of Hebrews that's how we enter into a new phase in life will your anchor hold in the storm of life ah things are tough out there will your anchor hold in the storm of life you see I chose that song not only because it's slant to Hebrews also it's because it's because it is written by a woman Priscilla Owens she was born in Baltimore in 1829 of Scottish and Welsh blood for over 50 years Priscilla Owen actively was actively involved in the work of ministry she wrote many hymns in fact one of the reasons why I chose it also is because she's the one who wrote the song we have heard the joyful song Jesus saves Jesus saves that the song that was 50 years ago let me put it 50 years ago I was lost 15 years I didn't care I think I had a hole in my heart my mom left Haiti I was seven one year after I was born she left the US she returned spent only three years with her very great years I enjoyed her very smart she was into business things like that when seven she left for the US with the hope of everybody with that for us to just come to the US two years after she died and she died at St. Luke Hospital in Harlem somehow the Lord had never been to that hospital you know and so there was that emptiness it's almost I didn't just didn't care at the same time I didn't care about school I just don't want to do my own stuff I wish I could just stop going to school get rid of all the adults and do my stuff and God was watching praise God 1972 50 years ago April 16th I attended an Advent seven day Adventist crusade as I entered that church on that day I heard that sermon my eyes were open and the congregation was singing Jesus save Jesus saves singing in French Jesus sauve aujourd'hui Jesus saves today and th then the, the, the song kind of struck me then I understood that I'm saving Jesus name I remained in church and on May 21st 1972 I got baptized 
they gave me seven day adventures and my life has changed completely drastically so to today's song will your anchor hold written by the same woman who wrote jesus saves it's very meaningful to me and you see there was a woman you know uh, called mary fowler mode she was dying she was a songwriter also and right outside of her door the window the church members stood up and were singing will your anchor hold you know she was uh, like a trespassing she was she was you know she uh, she was she was she was she was dying and then before she died she sent a message to the group she said tell them for me that the anchor still holds and she died you know what we you know what the purpose of an anchor the purpose of an anchor uh, the anchor prevent a ship from being swept away by wind and waves the anchor steadies the ship and as I speak with you today my brothers and sisters I don't know when we will take our next communion together one thing I know Jesus made the promise I will have a big communion service in heaven when I return I want to be a deacon I want to be there and because of of GPS and all these things I probably I just put you know MJ from J which is Monica Jackson from Jamaica <laughs> then I will be able to to say hi sister Monica sister Rose you're gonna be there sister Marie Jalan there's you lead the song service amen you know you know I, I want to see my children and my wife I want to see probably I should just put Mount Vernon members then a little light will be shining and there'll be no mass I'll be able to see Yvonne's face it, no mass no COVID do you understand my brothers and sisters so you know it, it, this is this is the beauty of it so that's why I'm asking you the way that you are will your anchor hold will your anchor hold sister Morgan will no longer need her walker and she will not say pastor she say pastor <laughs> then all those who are resurrected Brian brother Mac Brian sister Mac I like to see Sister Barbara Jones too. Yeah, I like to see her. And Sister Bishop. You understand? You know, I like to see how about the silver will look like. So let us all pull together. Let us provoke each other to love. Let us care for each other. Let us forget. You know, I pray that the kitchen downstairs turns into a heaven of peace so when food is being distributed nobody bothers the people who are sacrificing themselves i like you to come back you know I, I know there'll be a big food service praise god for those people for during covid they were downstairs every sunday cooking serving nobody knows my church members you don't see them but they're there systematically and especially when you go to the supermarket things are so expensive nowadays so when somebody gets a bag, it's a bag that was $30, $40. Thank God for those dedicated souls. Let us, you know, Paul should not make any comment. I'm through. Let us just sing those verses. And I'd like you to just, all you have to do is to sing the chorus. We have an anchor. Jesus Christ. There'll be trouble each verse addresses a special necessity a special urgency and then ends up with one thing regardless of how things may look we still have an anchor within the hell holding you the cable train trouble the wind is strong 
you know, uh, uh, the breakers announce that there are rocks in the bottom. But one thing I know, my anchor holds within the veil hey, through Jesus Christ. So why don't you just go ahead, praise him. I know you didn't plan to stand. You know, you're going to sing, you're going to sing seated. Will it be too much if I ask you to come with me? And, and why don't you make that sacrifice, ladies? Let, let's just come and, and lead the church in singing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Priscilla Owens in 1882 wrote that song. And it's a song I invite you to look into. And the question I ask you, will your anchor hold? But one thing I know because of the blood of Christ, it will hold. And because it holds, you must love each other and praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Will your anchor? Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or fire To if to safely mourn, if to safely mourn, to the storm with us, for to safely mourn by the Savior and the cables pass from his heart to thine, can defy the blast through strength divine. Come on, lift it up and say, we have. We have an anchor that keeps us all. Step fast. Step fast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to. Fasten to the rock which cannot move. Ground is firm and deep in the Savior's love. If you could just stretch your hand towards heaven and say we have an anchor that keeps us all stand fast stand fast and sure while the billows roll pass into the rock pass into the rock which cannot move hallelujah grounded Grounded, firm, and deep in the Savior's love. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands for that anchor. It's an anchor that's unmovable. It's an anchor that's unshakable. No man can move it. No one can touch it, but our God is faithful. The anchor holds. The anchor holds. Church, it is it's so good to have a communion Sabbath. It's good that Desmond is hyped up about the blood. Oh, yeah. It's good that the pastor is so liberated, right, to give you this provocative, beautiful message about God's grace. Um, we will now part for the uh, foot washing service. Uh, we will invite the women and children to go to the fellowship hall. We will invite the men to uh, wash feet in the kindergarten room. We also invite those who are watching online to participate as much as you possibly can. We will return and then have um, the Lord's Supper. Uh, you are, will be directed by the ushers to go to your various locations. God bless you. As we prepare to depart, 
for our hymn of separation as our deaconesses and deaconesses prepare the way forward. We're going to invite those of you who are watching us online, virtually. You can also take communion today as well. We'll ask you to prepare yourselves to consecrate your lives. And as we pause for this break, we'll be back shortly to partake of the Lord's Supper as we sing the first verse of Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain in the cross, in the cross. Come on, lift your voice. Jesus, keep me near. Jesus, keep me near. Me near the cross. There's a precious. Our healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. Follow the direction of our ushers as we sing in the cross. In the cross. the river. Near the cross, a trembling soul. A trembling soul. Love and mercy sound me. There the bright and morning star. Oh, lift your voice as you go and say, in the cross. In the cross. In the cross. Be my glory ever. Be my glory ever. Till my rapture. Till my rapture. Just Rest me on the river. Just beyond. 
beyond the river. I wonder if I have a witness still here that can just raise their hands and say, In the cross, in the cross.
this song light of the world you step down in the darkness beauty that made One more time, lift it up, light of the world. Never know. Lift it up and declare and say, I'll never know.
Amen. Here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down and to declare that our God is wonderful. This is a special moment for God's church. I'd like to invite each one of you to enter inside your heart, into yourself, do some introspection and look at your heart and tell Christ, do something special for me today through the cleansing of your blood. So let us read. scripture reading comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'll read for you verses 23 through to 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you, show, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Let us pray. Kind of loving Father, we come and we are simply awed by your love and care. You left heaven where you had everything and you chose to come here to earth to suffer, to be spit on, to be beaten, all just so that you could die for us. As we come today, dear Lord, we're following your guidance that as often as we drink this blood or we eat this bread which symbolizes your body, we should remember the sacrifice that you made for us. Please strengthen our resolve so that we can reap the rewards that you have in place for us. Let us remember your sacrifice. Let us leave from here clean knowing that we're purged from sin and moving forward to your heaven, which awaits us. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
let us stand let us stand let us all stand and we say the Bible says that Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body before we proceed I like to ask has everyone been served this is our policy no one left behind so he took the bread he blessed it and broke it and told his disciples to partake let us eat this bread that represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I tell you, I am telling you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. Please be seated. That lift your voice and say forward reach.
wipes all away. Wipes away all my tears. All my tears. How many people know the blood, the blood that, gives me strength that gives me strength from day to day? It will never Come on, if you're glad about that blood, lift it up and say, for it reaches to the highest Come on, say mountain. And it's low to the lowest. Oh, yeah. The blood that gives me sisters because of the war in Ukraine the rubles is in trouble and the yen the Japanese yen may lose its power the American dollar will lose its power the euros will lose its power but ladies and gentlemen I'd like to tell you the blood will never lose its power as you hold this cup in your hands let us remember what Christ said this cup represents my blood, blood of your covenant, my dedication to your salvation, a promise that I will always stand with you. This blood represents the washing agent to cleanse your soul so that you don't live in sin. But blood, this blood represents my brothers and sisters. This wine represents what Christ has done for you and for me. Therefore, I invite you why don't we stand as a sign of reverence? Just let us stand. Sabbath. 
Oh, no, we cannot miss Pam. No, not at all. Beautiful. Amen. Amen. Has everyone been served? So, you may unseal, scalp, and partake of this blood that represents the blood of Christ.
Hallelujah. Mount Vernon, may God keep you near the cross. May you constantly have the cross of Jesus Christ before your eyes. In your times of trouble and tribulation, remember the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. You've been rescued, you've been washed, you've been redeemed. And you are being prepared to enter the whole, most holy place in the presence of God. May the Holy Spirit lead you step by step into all the truth. May you continually grow in spirituality until the day when the trumpet sound. Whether you are resting or you are alive, one important thing, we will all meet before the throne of the living God. We'd like to say thank you. Thank you to the deacon and deaconesses. Let's say amen. Thank you. you know, a lot of works has been, uh, have been um, done to make this possible. Thank you, Sir Lenton, for ordering everything. I'd like to say thank you to my wife uh, for, for baking the bread. You know, I was part of it. I was watching. And th thank you to every single elder. You know, we've worked for many years, you know, and it's a blessing. You know, I, I've, I've pastored many churches, and I can tell you some places, it's not that easy. But this place here, or those elders here, they're number one. Let's put our hands together for our elders. Elders, thank you. Thank you so much. Every single one of our elders, those present and are present, you are a special bunch filled with the Spirit of God. You know, um, you know, uh, in some places we have you have no musicians. You know, every Sabbath you have to chase someone. But you know, this place is blessed. To remember, let's say Amen. Please say this place is blessed because we have the best. Okay, thank you so much, gentlemen. You know, and, and uh, so I understand that from now on, once a month, a praise team will come to my church. Is that the case? <laughs> Yeah, so, all right, uh, there's you will decide who comes, okay? All right, okay. okay. <laughs> so, I'd like to say, members, let's hold on to each other in love. They can, they can say, hold on, hold on. The day is approaching. Christ is coming back. Let us just stay at the cross all the time and see the face of Christ. Praise team, medical team, ushers, everyone. May God bless you. Father in heaven, this is a very sublime moment. We will depart from this place to face the pharaohs of this world, the Nebuchadnezzars of this world, the Hitlers of this world arrogant presidents of this world we, we are ready to continue to run the course help us to say like Paul we are running the race and we will finish it with Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you and keep you safely may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace May the Holy Spirit establish its residence in your, his residence in your heart so that you are constantly led day by day through divine power. May God bless you today. May Christ wash you today. May the Spirit fill you today, tomorrow, and always. Till Christ returns, for we pray in his name. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. You don't have to shake the rest of the Tell neighbor the blood. Tell the neighbor the blood. Tell the, tell the neighbor the blood.
seated for a moment of meditation. Before we leave, um, few of we have received new members, and uh, I'd like to at this time ask our clerk, the president, Mr. Linton, can you call for me to give the right hand of fellowship to those who have been baptized and uh, they, they have participated in communion as a community of believers at this time? We like to ask them to move forward and the elders that are present will represent you in shaking their hands after benediction so you will go outside if you don't feel like you know give your fingers you know just an elbow you know just let them know how how excited you are to welcome you in the mount vernon seventh day adventist church family now sister lent microphone I know we have here um, <laughs> present here today is Richard Benjamin amen, amen. please stand brother Richard amen. you could come forward um, come to the front Sister Monica Jarrett. Taron Muldrow. Amen. Amen. Is Sister Karen Bishop here? I was told she's here today. Or Julia Ferguson? powerful worship experience we enjoyed today. We trust that you were tremendously blessed. We want to continue to connect with you and minister to you in any way that we can. Should you have a need for someone to talk to, get some guidance and instruction, or have someone pray with or for you, we may be reached at 914 664 8586. That's 914-664-8586. If you don't get anyone, please, please leave us your name and number and the best time to be reached and someone from the pastoral team will return your call. Thank you and God bless you.